Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast, your weekly dose of knife news and information about knives and knife collecting. Here's your host, Bob the Knife Junkie DeMarco. Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast. I'm Bob DeMarco. Coming up, we're going to take a look at a new Spartan Blades. Uh, my first Tucson in the DeMarco knife collection. And then we're going to rate your EDC folder as a self-defense implement. And when I say EDC folder, I mean kind of in that three inch to three and a half inch at max uh, range. These are knives that are kept in our pockets more for taking care of utility tasks, like cutting off that errant thread from our collar or cutting our sandwich in half. But before we get into all that, be sure to like, comment, subscribe, hit the notification bell, That'll let you know every time we have a new video uploaded. Okay, so before we get into anything I just mentioned, I have to show off what I was carrying in my pockets today. This is our pocket check. And today I broke I, I broke several cardinal rules of uh, Bob DeMarco, Knife Junkie, carry, And that is uh, I had the same blade uh, style. I had the same make. I had uh, same blade shape, almost the same knife straight across the board. Uh, I was carrying two of them. This in my front right pocket was the off-grid Rhino V2. This is version two. I love this beast of a knife. I say beast, but it is relatively svelte for its size. And I'm just speaking in terms of thinness. It's probably, uh, well, it's it's about 0.6 inches thick. So you're saying, yeah, but average is five inches, uh, uh, 0.5 inches thick. But this sucker is so big, it's got the footprint of a large old um, ZT, like a 0200 or something, wide, broad, long. And so at 0.6 inches thick, it feels thin. It feels svelte. And for that uh, width. Now, this thing is absolutely butter in the hand it feels so good especially in this saber grip like this uh, also you can come up uh, over the blade with your thumb uh, if you're really horsing through some material you need to add some um, some pressure with your thumb there it feels great incidentally it feels great in reverse grip i say incidentally because most of us don't really end up using our knives that way and if you had to i'm going to come over to this camera if you had to do one of those uh bushcraft reverse pull chest cuts you know these things where you hold the knife uh tip up edge in and you and you pull against wood to carve it i've only seen a couple of nerds online do that but if you had to do that uh this would be great for that too which is odd because it has a very ergonomically well sound handle it's 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 curvy it's got its swales and swoops and choils and such um but it feels great in hand. Uh, it's got a peel ply, somewhat inexpensive feeling peel ply G10. I'm not going to say cheap because it doesn't feel cheap, but it doesn't feel like the good stuff, man. And then it's got this uh, milling in it, this sort of rainbow milling. Um, and if you're not watching, it doesn't look anything like a rainbow. That was poor choice of words, but there are concentric arches. <clears throat> milled into the back half of this knife and it it looks good and it feels good it's a great way to index the knife and tell where you have it in hand uh massive clip point blade this is a clip point let's look at it uh you've got um you've got this thumb ramp right here just north of the ricasso and then you have this long clip all the way to the tip this is a clip point and i will go to the mattresses with you this is not a drop point um, but it doesn't matter. That's all semantics. What it is, is a very broad blade. It's over an inch and a half from the peak of the thumb ramp to the sharpening choil. It's a little bit over an inch and a half broad. It's about an inch of a flat grind. So this sucker gets really nice and thin behind the edge. It is a great, uh, slicer. This knife is, and, uh, it's just a great, well, it's a great slicer, but also extremely tough. You would expect this to do very well in a, in a hard use application. It's got a liner lock, very nicely engaged. Uh, and then what I love about this flipper design is the flipper. <clears throat> it's a perfectly rounded, uh, radius flipper with jimping all about. And no matter where you, no matter where your finger ends up landing on that, on that, uh, 
flipper, it'll open. And as I said that, it landed and I did not open it, but that was user error, I swear. Um, you've got a deep carry pocket clip fold over and it's recessed in its own little nook, how intimate, and then it has flatly, uh, <clears throat> what, 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 what are we calling these? Flat and recessed screws. So it doesn't come up and menace the seam of your pocket. Uh, this is a knife that my brother has had for over a year and I've always kind of admired. I was very much looking forward to getting one of these in hand. I have and I love it. This thing is 154 cm, sharp as the day is long and uh, tough and looks cool. <clears throat> so what was I carrying in my left pocket? Now, this is something that is very rare, very rare indeed. So take a screenshot because I'm taking this video down as soon as it's published. I was carrying in my left pocket a baby rhino i know i know a baby rhino i'm gonna hold it right here and they're gonna look like they're the same size and then i will reveal the size difference but this little beauty is brand new from off-grid knives as you can tell from the name it is a baby version of this most large and robust rhino that i had in my front right pocket this little baby rhino has a blade of two and a half inches long it is teeny tiny and but when you look at the overall profile of the thing it's exactly the same except for the jimping right here on this front forward portion these knives are exactly the same this one has just been reduced by some percentage uh even uh you can really even tell this by by when you turn it on its side it is as thick as the original i'm still not going to reveal the size difference but i'll show you the thickness and you'll see there that the baby rhino is as thick as the rhino v2 so the baby rhino um, has some discipline it must engage in as it grows older because if it's as thick as its father at such an early age it will be a goliath when it's larger or when it's older so this also has a deep carry pocket clip fold over very nice with the recessed uh pocket screws and um it also has that nice radial uh milling that arched milling in the back half of the handle. Uh, this one is gray and it has that uh, gray tit titanium nitrate coating, which I find quite attractive with the gray G10. Uh, but this little sucker is teeny tiny. All right, now you're starting to see it. Great action. It's on bearings like it's big brother, but let's, let's show you. So there it is. You can see that uh, the baby rhino really indeed is a baby rhino looks like it could actually uh been brought to term inside the full-size rhino and then just sort of you know extricated or pushed out and then into this perfectly formed tiny little proportionately um proportionately and ergonomically sound knife this thing even though it's tiny and even though it's a just about a three finger knife three and a half finger knife fits great in the hand a lot of that has to do with the fact that they added jimping uh on this portion of the blade forward of the thumb ramp and so when you get this thing gripped in your fist and you have your thumb almost all the way down the blade there or your forefinger it just hides in there and it's a little utility <clears throat> excuse me machine showed this to my wife she she does her little thing it's so cute when i give her a knife she flips it a couple of times she looks at it and she really you know she, i'm looking at this thing bob i'm not just humoring you and she really eh, take a little bit off here and you know she has her little her little uh, metrics for judgment but she loved this knife and uh the funny thing is is i was expecting her not to because Frequently, I'll show a small knife to my wife, and I'm like, hey, baby, you want it? And she's like, nah, I'm happy with my Kershaw speed safe. And, I'm like, ah. and this one, she's like, I will happily snatch this up from you. So now uh, I have to get another one because I think I really, really actually want this one in my collection. Now, I do apologize for breaking so many cardinal rules for Knife Junkie Carry today. Same make, same damn model, just a smaller version, uh, same lock, same blade. Like everything about it is the same. It's, it's just smaller. By the way, this is 14C28N. So not all things are equal. Um, actually, some may say that this is a better blade than this. Uh, some like, I like 154CM. But in any case, uh, this is not something I do ordinarily. But today, I just knew I wanted them both because I wanted to compare and contrast. So that's what I was carrying today. What were you carrying today? Uh, 
please let me know. But don't go on and on like I just did. Just let me know in comment form. Today I was carrying my Hinderer XM 77 and my paramilitary 4 uh, with the... Um, Sabenza 76. You know, let me know what you're carrying. I'm interested. I really am. And uh, well, it puts a little wind in my sails to know I'm not the only one. All right. So coming up uh, tomorrow night on the Knife Junkie podcast is our monthly Patreon giveaway. Uh, our monthly, let's call it a gentleman junkie giveaway. Uh, because those of you who are Patreon members at the $10 level, you get entered into a monthly giveaway. But if you're not a Patreon member, uh, just downstream, I'm going to tell you about an exciting giveaway opportunity in the offing. But right now we're talking about Patreon. And uh, for the, um, what month is this? January 2022 giveaway. Let me show you what's getting given away uh, in this uh, most random of drawings. Okay, uh, this was a gift. Uh, this was a knife bequeathed to the channel by Dave, this old sword blade reviews. Uh, Dave, thank you very much. He has a couple of my knives right now, and he's done some really, well, he's done one cool video so far and has taken some beautiful pictures. Be sure to check out this old sword blade reviews. Uh, and Dave, he's a great guy, very knowledgeable, awesome collection. So he gifted this to the channel. This is one of the new uh, brands that uh, we're hearing about from China that is just going above and beyond. And you can tell, first of all, from this sort of Leatherman-esque uh, case it comes in. Of course, it comes in a box, but this comes in a case. And even though I don't use these things and actually find very little need for them, I like receiving them with a knife. I like the little carbon fiber, or not the carbon fiber, but the microfiber cloths. I like all that stuff. A sticker. Give me a sticker. Sure. So I feel like I'm getting my money's worth. And I think everyone feels that way. So I think Shielden already, you know, had 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 the recipe right. Uh, it's an attractive looking uh, nylon Cordura case with the uh, blue stitching and the Shielden logo. This you can take, put on and off your belt without having to remove your belt. Uh, but let's get to the contents itself. So uh, this month's Gentleman Junkie giveaway is this most beautiful, cool, unique, and interesting Shielden Tranchodon, or perhaps Trancodon, not being a ologist that uses words such as that. I'm not sure if it's Trank or Tranch, but that doesn't matter. You don't spell it, son. You eat it. What movie is that from? So, yeah, you don't you don't pronounce it, son. You cut with it. So this is the Tranchodon with a beautiful stainless. Um, I think this is 9CR uh, MOV. Um, damascene steel there and you have this beautifully sculpted carbon fiber slash g10 uh, laminate here a very nice uh, pocket clip uh, grayed out you have nice standoffs the whole thing is just a very attractive package uh, but the real the real win here is the action it is just amazing the action of this is amazing actually if i'm gonna if i'm gonna tell you what the real win is the real real the reels win. If you look at it, it comes down to a very thin edge. It's a broad ass. It's a broad blade here at one and a quarter inches just for the grind, just for the grind. So you have a full flat grind, one and uh, one and a quarter inches. It gets very thin behind the edge. All of that stuff aside, it just looks so cool. This is one of those knives that Dave sent and I, it took all of my willpower not to just uh, quietly absorb it into my own collection, which could have been done. But I was like, yeah, but maybe if I give this super cherry knife away, more people will like me. So I'm giving this one away. I think it's gorgeous. I think you all think it's probably pretty cool too. And here's a little detail that you might not have seen uh, initially, but when you look at this handle, it's you can see these little for lack of a better term, blisters that are milled uh, out of the handle. Not out, but they're they raised up. And they add a feel that you can't not see in this camera, damn it. But they add a feel that is uh, just extra pleasing and extra ergonomic. Uh, it's sort of a smooth and radius handle. So to have those uh, little details there, give your fingers something extra 
to grip onto and to index. Uh, I think this blade is beautiful. I first saw this on Neve's Knives and I thought, oh my goodness, I need to get one. Uh, you're, I know you're asking, can you Spidey flick it with the fuller? Uh, you can, you can, but you have to find the right angle. A lot of knives are like this. Got to find the right angle. And then you have to use the meat, the fat of that middle finger in there and let the fat grab the harsh edge of the steel, and then it will spidey flick out. But uh, this is not my knife. I haven't carried it, and I haven't fiddled with it much. So once it is your knife for being a gentleman junkie and you win it, you let me know. How does it flip with the fuller? So that is the Shield and Tranchadon. Thank you so much, Dave, this old sword blade reviews. Uh, do check him out. Thank you for bequeathing this to the channel. It's greatly appreciated. And uh, I know the patrons will love it. Now, all that being said, let's see. How do I how do I put this? How do I put this? Well, first, let me just say thank you. Thank you. Not 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 just thank you. Thank you, one and all. Thank you for coming to the show. Thank you for listening. Thank you for spending your time uh, with me with the folks we have on the show. Um, you know, I always joke, uh, I could talk to the people around me about knives all day long, but just no one would listen. So thank you for listening. Thank you for being a part of this. And then of course, thank you to Patreons, uh, to patron members, Patreon patrons for coming in and spending your, your money on it too. I appreciate that greatly. Um, and I just want to give a word of thanks to a couple of new patrons, well, a few, a couple is two, a few new patrons who have come along since December that I have been uh, remiss in mentioning thus far. So I want to mention Clive. Thank you, Clive. Appreciated. We have Dakota. What a cool name, Dakota. Uh, we have Edward, who goes as Hero Sticks, a big participator in the Thursday Night Knives. Thank you, Hero Sticks. We have Mr. Vicey256, who comes to us from the Schweiz. He's from Switzerland. And then we have uh, Supermate and uh, I'm sorry, Super Nate. And then we have Aunt B 2001. And uh, I believe your name is Rebecca. And I know who you are. And thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. One and all for participating with us on Patreon, uh, on Patreon, no matter what your participation level. Uh, it's it's really appreciated. And and that is going above and beyond. But if if Patreon is not your thing or if uh patronizing content that you can get for free is not your thing. And believe me, I get it. Uh, you can also take advantage of uh, Knife Junkie giveaways here on the channel because on Thursday Night Knives moving forward, we're going to start doing a lot more giveaways for people who are just showing up and, and hanging out. And we'll do a random drawing much like we do with the patrons. Um, but we're going to use, we'll use a different mechanism. It'll be a different segment and all that. But I've realized uh, through my position here that I've kind of carved out, I have benefited. I've gotten free knives, not too many, not as many as I'd like to imagine I have, but I've gotten some knives. I've been the beneficiary of some of this enthusiasm, and I'd like to pass it along. Now that I've had a chance to assimilate, make videos and that kind of thing, I want to pass these things along to you. So be sure that uh, you check out Thursday Night Knives and, uh, you know, all you got to do is show up and uh, you'll be entered to win. And these are the kind of things I'm giving away. I'm giving away like Finch knives, uh, off-grid knives. I'm going to give away a couple of Civivis in the offing. So this will take us a few weeks out, and then I will re, you know, reconnoiter and figure out what else we'll give away. Uh, but I think it adds some fun. It's also self-serving because I cannot just accumulate knives forever, just like you can't. Uh, but maybe if you get one from this show, maybe that'll be a keeper. You'll remember, you know, that period of your life where you listen to this insane chit chat. All right. So that's it. Just be sure that you check in Thursday Night Knives. From now on, we're going to be doing a lot more knife giveaways and maybe other stuff, other kind of swag. Who knows? Wouldn't you look sharp in a knife junkie hoodie? I think you would. So that kind of thing is coming too. All right, that's it. I just wanted to say that. Uh, be sure to check out uh, the giveaways and Thursday Night Knives. Uh, if you want to support the show, uh, you can do it on Patreon, as I've mentioned. And the quickest way to do it and check out all that you get from that, including interview extras, is go to thenifejunkie.com slash Patreon. I will repeat that very long address again because it is thenifejunkie.com 
slash scan it right here. Patreon. You're listening to the Knife Junkie podcast. And now here's the Knife Junkie with the Knife Life News. One of my favorite knife companies uh, is an American company. It's called Spartan Blades. You may have heard of them. Uh, well, they have a new knife out, and uh, the real spirit of Spartan Blades are fixed blades. That's what they started with, and then they eventually, excuse me, graduated into folders. And man, have they killed it with the folders, especially in bringing on Bill Harsey with the uh, Spartan Harsey folder. Uh, but this uh, first knife for Spartan Blades, uh, kicking off 2022, is a fixed blade, and it's called the Moros, or Moros? That's the question, and I'll, I'll tell you why in a minute. But this is a beautiful knife. Uh, it's designed by, in my opinion, it's a beautiful knife. I love that blade. It's a long drop point blade with a super long swedge and a thumb swale on the blade near the Ricasso. And then it's got a nice upward swooping um, thumb ramp uh, right behind the Ricasso on the dorsal side. And then a fully contoured um, micarta handle set. It is gorgeous. And then uh, on the on the bottom side, right by the Ricasso again, it's got a perfect sharpening choil, like nicely generous sharpening choil, and then a small but definitely utilitarian finger guard there. That finger guard is not going to hamper your lifestyle, but it may stop you from sliding up on that blade if you're thrusting it, though you probably will not... Uh, uh, come in contact with too much resistance given given the swedge and the point of this blade this thing is uh, well okay so this is the, this that's all opinion i think i'm just sitting here staring at it i think it's beautiful but you can decide for yourself it's designed by uh excuse me by curtis iovito one of the uh one of the two founders of the company he's designed a number of their blades and this is his latest i think it's awesome five and a half inches perfect tactical size uh, for fighting, for fighting and cussing and spitting, but also for all sorts of utility purposes. It's a, it looks like a perfect all arounder. Uh, S45 VN is the steel. Uh, Micarta is the handle. I think it's interesting S45 VN for a long time. They were doing everything, including their fixed blades like this in S35. And it makes sense. They graduated to S45. Now, earlier I said Moros or Moros, uh, the reason I asked that question is Moros, you know, the Moros in the Southern Philippines are a very, very blade oriented culture. And I know that there is a lot of uh, um, Filipino knife fighting background that goes into some, uh, the, the, the Spartan DNA. And so I was just curious, is this the Moros? Like they're talking about the tribe of, of, uh, of badass bladed uh, Filipino warriors, or is it Moros? And it's going along their um, Greek, uh, uh, you know, uh, Hel Hel Hellenic, 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 uh, Greek uh, tradition. You know, they name everything after Greek gods and and uh, you know, godlets and such. So that's what I want to know. I'm sure two seconds more of research and I'd know that. But but this is the mystery, and and that's why we're all here, right? The mystery. So we're gonna find that out, and I will let you know. I, I have a feeling it's not named after the Moros of Southern Philippines, but I don't know what Moros is. So I'll check it out and I'll let you know. All right. Still to come on the Knife Junkie podcast, midweek supplemental state of the collection, where I'll show you my first Tucson oh, yes, and a couple of off-grid knives. And then how does your EDC folder stack up as a self-defense implement? We will take a look at this very important question coming up right here on the Knife Junkie podcast. Now in its 42nd edition, Knives 2022 is the annual showcase of the most remarkable custom and factory manufactured knives in one remarkable collection. Get your copy today at theknifejunkie.com slash knives2022. So if you want to check us out on all of the uh, podcast apps, this is where you can do it right here. Apple, Google, iHeart, Spotify, Stitcher, TuneIn. Uh, if you can't watch this or you can't finish it on video, definitely go there, download it. And check it out while you mow the grass or do the dishes. Do the dishes. Do the dishes. And by the way, you still have clothes in the dryer. Okay, so first up on uh, State of the Collection this week is my very first Tucson knife. And um, being 100% honest, this is the first Tucson knife that actually 
you know, tempted me all the way to purchase. Uh, this is the TS301. This is in D2. Originally, they were in Tucson's 14C28N, which I hear from trusted sources such as Jared Neve was very excellently done. I have no doubt that they did this D2 in an excellent fashion also. Uh, at least for my purposes, I'm sure it will be way more than adequate. Uh, but what about this knife inspired me to actually buy it? Uh, well, I think it's beautiful. I'll start off with that. I think it's a re to me, it's very appealing. Now, I'm not a huge fan of Persian knives or upswept beyond the spine style knives. And in a way, that's what I think this is. Even though we have a thumb ramp here and the point is below the peak of the thumb ramp, really the spirit of the thing comes from the spine of the blade. And I feel like, I mean, the spine of the handle. And I feel like the tip of the blade rises above that. And to me, mm, I just am not so much into the Persian style blade. Um, and I know this is not a Persian you're saying right now. That's a clip point, Bob. You should know that. Yes, I see that. Uh, but I'm just talking about the orientation of the tip to the spine of the blade. Usually I like the tip lower than the spine, but <laughs> that didn't matter in this one because um, I do find this blade to be very compelling. Uh, this really high flat grind just uh, looks like it's going to be incredibly uh, cutty and slicey. And then from what I hear, it is. Now, I just received this today, so I have not had a chance to uh, take it through my mild tests yet, but uh, I have a feeling it's going to win with aplomb. Okay, so now I'm going to move down the blade. It's got really, really excellent jimping on this uh, generous thumb ramp here, and I might in on another knife say, ah, the jimping's just a touch aggressive, but when you look at this four-finger quote unquote guard or you know when you look at the angle of this downward um trajectory on the choil right in front of the blade on the dorsal side it's not a lot so if you did have to thrust this uh and you're in a saber grip you might rely on your thumb and that jimping to stop your hand from sliding up so i say keep the nice and uh, aggressive jimping there giant thumb studs which appear to be the blade stops, but they're not. There's a uh, there's a, a stop pin right there. Um, but those those uh, giant uh, thumb studs cannot be missed. You cannot misfire this thing because those thumb studs sit so proud of the handle. You can actually uh, I can actually use this second joint on my thumb to flip it open almost as easily as the tip of my thumb, the thumb, which just goes to show how nicely tuned that detent is and how generous the uh, thumb studs are. Okay, so as you move back, you see there's an inlay of carbon fiber, that's the bolster, and then this sort of uh, thick weave canvas micarta, which though it shows a lot of epoxy in that white in the voids, you, you, can, you can hardly help that with canvas or anything uh, with wider fibers than canvas. I like the way it looks, and um, I like the way it feels, too, uh, between the carbon fiber bolster and this uh, coarse micarta. You cannot, cannot feel that transition. Cannot feel it at all. And that's a nice, that's a nice feature, I got to say. And then, and then you move towards the uh, frame, the titanium frame here, and you see it's sitting proud. So the titanium fr frame, if you're looking at it exactly sideways like this, you can see the metal, uh, the titanium frame rise above and uh, rise out all around concentrically from the handle material. And that is not inlaid. These are like half inlaid, but also kind of sit on top. And, and I'll try and show you what I mean there. You can kind of see. So there's a ridge here so this is not smooth from the from the proud frame uh to the micarta is not smooth okay that's long for great fit and finish on this maybe not what you expect but great fit and finish um and then here this interesting uh little tidbit here uh right where you see the two screws that allow you to hold on 
uh, the steel lock bar interface, you can access access them through that carbon fiber liner, which almost seems like too much. <laughs> but if you're going to have them there, you have to be able to access them. So uh, incredible action. Uh, like I said, I've only had this for several hours at this point. Already uh, just completely drop shutting. But if you don't like a drop shut action, it closes nicely manually. There's just enough resistance there in the pivot when you're closing it to not have it chop off your finger and to give you that pleasing uh, tactile feel of closing the knife manually. Uh, I got to say, I'm really excited about this knife. I'm going to carry it and, uh, you know, use it a lot. I feel like it's sort of luxury. Well, it's a it's a hundred dollar uh, very well engineered knife I didn't need. So it is 100% luxury, but let's get beyond that. Let's just say I actually needed it. It's still a luxurious knife in its fit and finish, its materials, its, its extravagant design, its uh, unique pocket, well, you know, somewhat unique pocket clip with that ball interface there, that gear pattern backspacer. It's a deluxe lux kind of thing that you don't really need unless you want it, and then you need it. And so I'm interested to see how Tucson, well, fits into my collection and see how I like carrying it. So, uh, so far, it's a win. Um, Tucson is known for their exquisite machining and builds, um, but this is the first one that I, I just felt like I had to have. So very happy to have this. Okay, next up, <clears throat> we have a couple of off-grid knives I want to I want to I want to show off. The first one. Uh, I showed in a short this past week, and it's the off-grid cleaver version two. Uh, I this is the only cleaver knife in my collection. I'm not particularly drawn to the type, though I like I find them handsome, good looking, and all that. But I feel like without a point, I would miss a point. But this one right here has a point, and even even to the point where they've swedged it so that if you if you do want to thrust this into something, if you do need to thrust this into a clamshell package or a 55 gallon oil drum or a, uh, you know, 500 pound assailant, uh, it might go in better with that, with that. Uh, well, it most definitely will, will penetrate better with this swedge because otherwise you would have a big flat surface here that you would have to push the whole blade into. Uh, an interesting blade, uh, very nice, very, very thin and sharp behind that edge. I mean, the blade stock itself is thin, uh, but it's also a pretty broad uh, uh, one and a quarter inch thick blade with a full uh, with a with a nearly full flat grind. It's very thin. Um, it's got that uh, beautiful cleaver shape and the hole at the front top, which is evocative of a classic um, cleaver. Uh, deep carry pocket clip, recessed screws. G10 of the tenacious variety, very nice ergonomics. It 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 does have a soft detent, my particular version, and that doesn't mean that it fails much. But you can you can easily fail this knife uh, if you feel like it. Um, not sure why you would, but uh, overall, I'm very happy with this thing, uh, especially as the sole cleaver in my uh, collection and I can hear the comments being typed up now. Oh, Bob, you got to check out this cleaver or that cleaver. And I know I do. And I want to, uh, but you know, not enough hours in the day. And if it doesn't have a point, generally that's a deal breaker. Okay. So uh, that, okay. So the, the last in the state of the collection that I want to show off is another off grid knife. And I saw it when I first saw it, I will be 100% honest. When I first saw it, I had a similar reaction that I did when I saw the um, Medford Praetorian. I'm like, oh, you're just doing that to get attention. Like, that's not real. That's not useful. Well, it turns out I was wrong with the Medford Praetorian. It's actually a very useful knife, goofy as it is, uh, goofy a design as it is. Goofy, I love it. I spent a lot of money on that thing. I'm not saying, you know, not passing judgment, but it's a goofy ass design, right? Uh, well, same thing with this, but I have found that it is shockingly and surprisingly useful. This is the Off-Grid Knives Raven. Raptor. <laughs> Sorry, this is the Raptor, not the Raven. I apologize. 
Uh, so I look at this and I'm like, I'm not even going to talk about the ergonomics yet. Uh, I look at that blade and I think, you know, you're just trying to do something different. And I respect that. But I mean, what use do we have of a Warncliffe with a giant chip out of the tip? That's what it is. You know, it's a it's a flat bladed Warncliffe that got dropped on the DeMarco household basement floor. You know, this is how a lot of Warncliffe's end up in this household. So why am I going to pay money to get that? And I got it in hand and I started just noodling around with paper and realized, oh, wow. And then I noodle, started noodling around with uh, a piece of rattan, a round piece of rattan I have in there. Oh, oh, interesting. And I started to discover that this knife is actually extremely useful. Now, I don't think that this blade shape is too scalable i feel like it kind of needs to be about this size maybe a little bit larger in all dimensions would be fine but after a while uh you'd reach a point of diminishing returns with this blade shape but as it stands this blade shape you can do a lot with you have a very thinly ground flat ground portion here this long main flat portion is excellent for uh, cutting cardboard for uh feather sticking for doing all sorts of straight bladed things you might uh you might need this for it is and what i mean is for a straight blade it is very thin behind the edge it is a very thin slicey portion this front part okay we get that we understand what that's all about that's not the weird part the weird part is this recurve up front like what is that all about and then all these facets well the facets are part and parcel of getting this grind uh, they are not gratuitous facets. Um, but this recurve portion, this curved portion here is way more useful than you think it is right now. Okay, so this is one of the things I, I told you I feather sticked with this here. Yeah, but I also feather sticked with this. Feather sticked, if that's a word. Uh, so this curve here is just the right size. It's about three quarters of an inch from tip to tip and it's just the right right size for most like sticks i could find in my backyard and you can get it in this groove and you can feather stick all day long with this now you look at this knife and it looks like a tactical mall ninja bat wing killer knife but i think that this excels as a utility knife because uh this curved portion is always is also great for these kind of draw cuts uh, where you're, where you're, you know, an exacto knife cut, uh, but you have a little bit of recurve behind that in case you run in, into some material. Um, I, 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 I gotta be honest. I don't like the way it looks, and I was expecting not to like how it works, but it works great. And I'm gonna do a video showing different uh, uses of this thing, and um, and say, hey, Carrie uh, of Off Grid Knives, <laughs> great design, I think. I mean, I think I'll be saying that because so far I've been shocked. What I don't like about this knife, uh, uh, even though I was ready to not like the blade, I love the blade. I'm not crazy about the handle. Uh, this portion here, this this uh, forward sort of guard portion seems a little bit too big, seems to keep you a little bit too far away from that blade. And then the flipper tab being totally misshapen for that area i don't like i feel like you could have it almost exactly the same shape as this but on this side maybe it would have to sit proud once opened but i would like it to be a little bit more in keeping with the main shape of the handle that's an aesthetic thing and kind of a an ergonomic thing uh, this is my one trip up point is right around here when i when i hold this knife uh but all in all, I would say uh, its positives outshine its negatives. There it is. The weird off-grid knives Raptor and the Cleaver B2. Both great knives. I do like off-grid knives quite a bit. And I like that they take chances uh, chances like this um, in D2. A D2 chance. Sounds like an emo rock band. All right. Last up tonight, your EDC folder. I know you have one. It's that favorite little three inch to 3.5 inch knife that you carry with you for utility tasks. Oh, my, my knives are all just, they're just tools. They're not weapons. 
I don't want to get demonetized. My tools aren't weapons. They're just tools because I'm a I'm a working guy with tools and I need tools. OK, I get you. I am, too. And I love tools. All day long, but I also love knives. And I also recognize that a knife in a pinch is a great way to get someone off of you, to get someone who has invaded your personal space or who has who has the audacity of taking an argument to a physical realm or someone who just cannot use their words. Heaven forbid you need to use a knife, but all you have is one of these really practical uh, EDC knives on you. How do they how do they add up as self-defense knives? This, of course, pure speculation on my part, but it's informed speculation. So let's let's go from there. Um, not informed from real world experience of being in knife fights, but I've, I've done enough training and stuff and uh, met enough of you suckers out there uh, that I love. I'm not calling you suckers, but you know what I mean. And uh, I've got an idea of what makes people feel secure, what makes people feel safe, and then what's practical, and then what really matters in the craft. All right, so let's start off with Demco knives. This is the AD20.5. Okay, so the pros of the AD20.5 as a self-defense knife, knife are as follows. Super strong lock in the shark lock. You've got jimping all day long on the top of the blade, and uh, I'm going to quote nothing, nothing fancy here and say that for a tactical knife, one of the main things you need is a good traction plan. That was the term he used, traction plan. And that includes ergonomics, like these swirls and uh, swoop, swoops and, and choils and such, swales, and then also jimping and tactile uh, feedback, you know, like, uh, like the texture and such. All right, for, for all of that, this knife is excellent. It's got, like I said, it's got the excellent blade. It's got really nice ergonomics that I'm betting most hands can fit in. And if they don't, there's an accommodation with that choil up there. Um, where the AD 20.5 loses me is this blade in particular. This is the shark's foot blade. I love, love, hate it. It's, it's, it's ugly, cute, like ET, you know, like I, I, I don't think it's pretty, but I can't stop looking at it. You know, maybe we know someone like that. Um, so, but all that being said, it also has a very rounded and oblique tip. And 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 it would be a chore using this in a self-defense situation in anything other than a slashing situation. Also, something that um, might be counterintuitive. You look at this and you think, wow, look at all these... Uh, Look at all the choils and and the ergonomics to to fit the hand perfectly. You don't necessarily always want that because this shaping commits your hand to that. And if you if you want to use this knife probably in its best way or any knife in its most uh, efficient folding self defense way, you want to hold it tip down, edge in because the lock will not fold on your fingers. If it fails, it will fail against this. Uh, stop pin or the stop lugs or whatever or the lock lock bar itself but it will not fail against your fingers so frequently uh, you'll hear people recommend self-defense experts recommend you hold even a folder like this all that being said still not enough tip for me um, but with the um, clip point version of this i would say uh, this is a good choice because it's small light it makes a great utility knife and that's what you're going to need it for mostly. But if you, in a pinch, have to uh, use it for something else, I feel like it would be an excellent platform. It's just the blade I have is not the right one. So I would go with the clip point with the Demco Knives 80 20.5. Okay, next up, no one was asking for this. But when I saw it, I was like, oh, this is a sleeper self-defense knife. All right, this is the Civivi Hadros. This is designed by Dylan Mallory, and I I bought this knife because I think it is beautiful. I love the lines of this knife. It's got a very graceful, uh, very thinly, deeply ground hollow point, uh, <laughs> hollow ground Warncliffe blade on thumb studs and bearings and liner lock, and then it comes to a very thin handle, thin meaning north to south, 
uh, it's the standard half inch uh, width, but north to south, it's very thin. So the width of the blade itself and the pocket clip helps it stay purchased in your hand without turning. Um, so why this one? First of all, if you're going to use it in a um, slashing standard um, saber grip like this, you have the benefit of that fully straightened edge and, uh, for slashes. We know that fully straightened edges uh, gash deepest, even deeper than a uh, hawkbill because a hawkbill will bite in uh, early compared to this. Um, and it's hollow ground, so it's very, very, very thin. It's very pointy. And this thin, fat handle allows you to very easily do this. And that is, if you can't see, I'm holding it uh, in reverse grip with the tip down and the edge in, in that sort of Pical style uh, that I'm always talking about. And then it gives you um, a perfect spot for your thumb to wrap over the top. And it, and, it's very comfortable because the handle is relatively neutral. It does curve down ever so slightly, uh, but that's that does not stop you from holding it effectively like this. Uh, tip down, edge in, and um, really, you know, if 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 you were to use this in an excited motion with that sort of psycho, uh, you know, style uh, ice pick thing, and it failed the lock, the lock might fold in on the fat of your hand here and that would suck no doubt but it wouldn't suck quite as bad as having it fail here and having it cut your pinky off which this could because it's so damn thin so uh civivi hadros civivis have excellent action uh on, on bearings they have excellent fit and finish they're relatively inexpensive this knife was 65 dollars i believe uh micarta and uh, uh 14C28N on this, so pretty damn good blade steel for the money. Uh, so if the Hadros, this little unassuming uh, knife, is the knife you carry with you, rest assured knowing that this little 3.25-inch uh, Mallory-designed Warncliffe would be an excellent self-defense knife if, heaven forbid, you needed it. Okay, next up is one that's emblematic. I guess is the right word or uh, ubiquitous. Maybe uh, it's the mini griptilian or in this case, the RSK, excuse me, mini RSK Mark one. This is the Doug Ritter designed uh, Ritter survival knife, mini folder. And um, this is my stand in, not only for this very popular knife, but for mini griptilians in general. Um, I do love this knife. I don't love the mini griptilians. I've always found their handles a little too short and I don't have giant massive meat paws, uh, but never, never gave me the same confidence in hand that this Hogue does. Um, all that said, this Hogue is amazing for pretty much anything you want to use it for, but it would not be a first choice for me, uh, in terms of self-defense. Um, then again, really, if we're talking about this and you need it, of course, if it's in your pocket, you're going to use it. But there are a few things about this that uh, may, would make me feel less confident. Uh, but what would make me feel confident, let's start there. 20 CV steel. This blade is awesome. Super, super sharp. It's flat ground. It's about a three quarter inch bevel to a very, very, very like just stupid sharp edge. Um, it's got the strength of the able lock that's ambidextrous bar lock enhanced. That's the, uh, the Hogue version of the axis lock, which we know is a very strong lock. Uh, but really it comes for me, the, the, it has great traction on the handle itself with that radiating, uh, sunburst pattern coming from the pivot. Uh, but the, the overall handle itself just feels small to me and there is going to be a knife coming up that is even smaller but makes me feel more confident with it in that sort of aggressive grip now i don't know what it is about this i know this is an excellent work knife and the large version of this would be a great tactical in the in a pinch kind of knife uh, but something about this one i believe it's the shorter handle even though it's a little bit longer than the uh benchmade mini grip um 
Well, let's. This is one of those ones that you're happy to have rather than nothing. Uh, but the the mini RSK Mark One, um, let's just call it better for hard use, small EDC tasks. Next up might be the winner, um, uh, and that's due to ergonomics and grind. But uh, this is the Spiderco Paramilitary Two, and this is a standard vanilla version uh or maybe i guess it's chocolate but uh it, it this is just a plain s35 vn oh, i know it can barely cut a thing it's only an s35 vn uh i've had this one a long time it's it's one of those few knives that has um even though i'm like eh, paramilitary i'm gonna sell it one of these days i end up using this thing uh more often than i care to admit and by care to admit i just mean because I've never fully fallen in love with this knife, but for this, uh, this is a very, very common EDC folder. And let me tell you why it would make, make an excellent uh, tactical folder, in my opinion. Um, okay, mostly ergonomics. Look at this handle. This handle, okay, so without that choil, it's got a 50-50 choil, 50 blade, 50 handle, roughly. It's more like 60-40, but it's got a half-half thing here. So you know you can come up here for hard work or for close-in work or whatever they say, detail, detailed work, uh, you know, when you're carving the trunk of the elephant or something like that. But if you ignore that choil and you come back and you grip tightly between these two partitions and use this center as well, right where it belongs, and then push your finger up against this perfectly jimped thumb ramp, this is a is a grip for the ages this is a knife grip right here this i'm if you can't hear me i'm holding a paramilitary two in saber grip with my thumb fully nestled up against that that thumb ramp that feels awesome you could go to town with this knife in that sort of slashy stabby kind of way it has a fully flat ground uh blade in this case s30 v and it is very thin and slicey. Of course, we know at this point, many other people have surpassed them in terms of how thin they've gotten. But, you know, thin is still thin. Sharp is still sharp. And this thing will go the distance, no doubt. Uh, it has annoying handle to blade ratio. It's got some other annoying things to it. But 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 none of those are practical. All of those are uh, in mostly in my mind. <laughs> so I think that as far as EDC knives go, I would have to say the PM2 is close to the top, if not at the top. And that's for EDC knives that you could turn to that tactical self-defense use in, in a real pinch. And wait, something I've, I've forgotten to mention is that in reverse grip, absolute dream. You can even turn it around, still feels comfortable. Even with that even with that swell there feels great in hand in every position, even though it's got a super ergonomic handle and, and that's something that is not nothing. Okay. Next up. Hmm. Okay. This one's very cool. This is the Finch holiday holiday H O L L holiday. So this is named after doc holiday, doc holiday, a fighting man. Uh, so this was uh, designed with Doc Holiday in mind, um, and uh, it, it's a tip of the hat to that old traditional doctor style um, slip joint knife. It's got the flat bottom for crushing pills, and it's got a very neutral, straight, rectangular, nearly uh, parallel uh, handle here. So it, it seems pretty plain. But really, what this thing here's where this accelerates. Okay, so it's a it's a charming, as all Finch knives are, charming little Warren Cliff flipper. Oh, look at that! What do you what do you know? And it's three inches long. And wait, is it three? One, two. Yeah, it's three inches long. Sorry about that. One fifty four cm. Nice. Uh, it almost looks hand rubbed. That steel. Um, what are you gonna do with this? This is this is nothing but a gentleman's knife. Well, that super neutral handle means you can hold it comfortably in any grip. And this knife, immediately when I got it in hand, I was like, this is begging 
for some Pical treatment, just like the Civivi Hadros. Uh, this is one of those worn cliffs uh, with a handle and a blade shape that make this right here very, very comfortable and very practical. Uh, this cute, adorable, uh, cute and adorable is maybe much. This super charming um, Finch knife is, a, I think, would make a really great self-defense knife. Of course, in a pinch, that's the that's the caveat every time. But um, that neutral handle, like I said, makes it comfortable in any grip. And that uh, very pointy worn cliff makes for an excellent self-defense blade. Here's something interesting about the worn cliff. I mean, we've talked about this many times on this show, uh, uh, a couple of times with the help of Michael Janich, explaining why a... a uh, a totally flat and straight cutting edge with a point is ideal for this kind of slashing for slashing. But when you turn it around and put it in this pick hall style tip down edge in, it's also because of that straight edge and because of the, in this case, when it's in this grip, that uh, trailing curved front edge, it is perfect for a reverse grip. So I think that this, holiday here finch holiday really really fits the bill for a great great edc knife that you could turn into a great self-defense knife next up is the trm atom i love the trm atom um for its many different qualities thin blade Beautiful grind, super sharp and slicey, great ergonomics, beautiful design. Um, so I've always loved this knife, but, or I should say, and being a knife, you're going to be able to use it as a knife. It is sharp and pointy and all that, but, and it is very well built, but I have never felt that sort of confidence with this knife. And what I mean by that is this this is a stout and sturdy, ready to go EDC knife, uh, but but it is so refined in a way that I feel like uh, maybe in that sort of super super adrenaline soaked situation where maybe the blade gets jammed somewhere and you're just trying to pull it out, that this I don't know I don't know instinctively I feel like this might not be the best choice though it is extremely sharp, very pointy and, and excellent. Uh, I'm not sure how this thing would fare uh, in a struggling medium. Uh, am I being ridiculous? That's quite probable or, or at least possible. Let me know what you think. So do you have a TRM, Adam? I've got two. <laughs> I've got two. I'm not saying it like that. I have two, but I haven't hard used hard used either one do you have a trm adam have you hard used it and do you think i'm way off base here in saying that uh, though it's a wonderfully capable and beautiful edc knife might not be the best self-defense um let me know what you think and uh, let me know if you think that's crazy coming off the heels of the shorter and smaller holiday am i off base maybe all right next up Chris Reeve Knives Sabenza. This Chris Reeve Knife uh, Sabenza, this is the 21. This will stand in for all Chris Reeve uh, locking folders in the Sabenza class. I'm not talking the the uh, the the not Menandis and those kind of knives, but these these kind of knives that we see as classic EDC knives. Well. I'm going to cut right to the chase and say, for the same reason, I, I had my doubts about TRM. I know it's a beautifully built knife for what it is, but this is also a beautifully built knife for what it is. And it's a lot thicker, sturdier, stouter, but it's almost as neutral as the TRM Atom in terms of overall design, blade design, handle ergonomics, and that kind of thing. I mean, they're different. You look at them. Definitely. They are different. Uh, but really at the heart of it, they are both very basic, very uh, utility driven knives. But which one in a pinch would you rather have? And I would have to say the Sabenza because the damn thing is built like a brick house. 
Um, and the longer you have it, it gets smoother and smoother and nicer and nicer. And uh, this one has a nice edge on it from Jared Neve. Um, so that's a that's a plus. This one also has a hollow ground blade and um, not for nothing, a sharpening choil that comes up, you know, one third or a quarter of the, the blade. So you could sharpen this thing all the way up to that sharpening choil. And it's still thin, thinly hollow ground right there at the top of that sharpening choil. So this thing could go a long way. And I feel like it's sturdier and stouter than uh, almost anything on the table. Plus, it's got a neutral handle, feels great in tip down uh, edge in, feels great in tip down edge out. Two very combative uh, uh, handholds you might use a knife in. How does it feel in uh, saber grip? Feels awesome. How does it feel in Filipino grip? Just as awesome. So I feel like um, this and my Umnum Zontanto would make excellent self defense knives uh, if need be. They would not break. I mean, it would take a hell of a lot to damage those. All right. Third to last, let me show you this. This is a, a an unassuming but beautiful little knife called the Rockwall by Tactile Knives. It is called the Rockwall, but let me let me just say that well, this has nothing to do with the name. So I'm not sure why I said that in particular, but the thing that struck me about this knife when I first got it was the point this for an edc knife for an edc drop point with a little swedge this knife is extremely aggressive from about a third of the blade forward that is a very nice aggressive tip that's a nice swedge a definitely a decent belly and a good straight there what i th i do think that in a pinch this would make a pretty good self-defense knife it's all metal um construction so it's steel and titanium construction and i think maybe that's part of what makes me feel like it would be uh ready ready to go it's got a backspacer instead of standoffs now uh, i i trust a backspacer to make the whole entire affair a little bit more rigid not that that's something measurable or that i can necessarily always feel but in this hypothetical situation of turning a an EDC knife into a into a tactical knife, uh, that all metal construction might be useful. Um, this little handle built to fit inside an old five stick Wrigley's gum package actually feels great in hand, um, both in edge out and edge in because it's pretty damn neutral the whole way over. Uh, but it's long enough that capping the pommel with my thumb still makes sense and still has a useful purpose. Sometimes you'll find yourself doing that, like with this knife, you'll find yourself capping the thumb, uh, capping the pommel, but still you have a little bit, you're a little bit too close to that edge there. So your pinky could still, you know, with any sort of real force, come up onto that blade. And I don't know about you, but my pinky is my weakest finger. You know what my strongest finger is? I'll leave that to your imagination. All right. Penultimate is from a company that I'm really starting to dig, and that's Concept Knives. I have two of them, and I want more. I want more. Uh, but this is the Concept Main Street. You look at it, it's a very utility. This is a very utility-looking knife. You've got a Warncliffe with a not very pointy point i mean it's it's pointy enough but somewhat obtuse it 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 looks like it's put on this earth to cut carpet and to do work and that kind of thing but i think this makes an excellent self defense knife for a couple of reasons first of all <clears throat> this uh micarta handle is um it's got recessed liners so it's a very strong handle um but at the same time, it's quite thin. This makes an excellent in the waistband folder. I don't know uh, if I'm, I don't hear too many people carrying folders in their waistband. I love to carry knives in my waistband, including folders. And this is one of those ones that just goes in there and, and you forget about. It's nice and light. All of the, uh, 
uh, that micarta is nice and light. It's got great action on bearings. It's got a somewhat neutral handle. You're seeing that this is something that's coming up a lot in this conversation, except for the AD20 and the PM2. They're all pretty much neutral because it allows you to change grips. You know, it, it allows you to go from this comfortable, I'm just on the work site, just working and using my knife to, oh, okay, um, I got to use it for self-defense and <laughs> I'm going to flip it over like this. Well, it's very, very neutral in the handle actually gives you great place to put your thumb and uh, you could definitely use this in this reverse grip but even if you don't want to go to that reverse grip um, it's a straight edge going to a point and that makes an excellent excellent slasher and uh, with that with that tip you got a good thruster and of course it's my car does so no matter what ends up getting on your hands your hands are going to stay in place pretty well on this blade. So I think the main street and I haven't, I haven't actually held the, the small main street, but I think they'll both be good for this purpose. Okay. Last up is an unexpected, <clears throat> but it's one that a lot of people use as an EDC because it's so light and so handy. And that's the Opinel number eight. What, what Bob, the Opinel number eight, this one is in Enox, uh, their stainless steel. And uh, this is actually my lunch knife from work. I brought it home and it will be going back tomorrow. But the number eight is, what is this? It's a three and about a quarter inch blade. And it is, um, they have a number one through number 13. Number 13 is immense. Number one is teeny tiny. Number eight is the sweet spot. This is the one that most people have. I have a number 10 which is two sizes larger than the eight. And I have it all tweaked and carved and, uh, you know, customized uh, by me. And it's my steak knife. And I love that thing. But this knife is so light and so unthreatening and so useful, so thin, so sharp, so easy to, easy to get sharp over and over that this is a knife that a lot of people carry. But how would it do if you needed to use it to fend off a scumbag? I think it would do well, and I'll, I'll detail why. First of all, look at that blade steel. Uh, that blade stock is nice and thin, nice and thin. It's fully flat ground, and it comes to a, in my case, zero edge, almost zero edge. I've uh, convexed mine to the point where it's, it's nearly got no secondary bevel. You have a very nice point on this clip point blade. Um, and then this, this rotary collar block uh, lock, I'm sorry. You just turn it like this and there's no way that is going to close. There's no way that's going to close. The whole knife will blow apart before that thing closes. So you get that locked and open and you have a very formidable weapon in your hand, even though it's a, this cheery orange beechwood and this charming French clip point blade, you can go to town with this. The problems you might run into though, I've addressed on my number 10 steak knife, which is the circularity in cross section. It's circular in cross section. And as we all know from watching Forged in Fire or from doing anything uh, on our own, when you have a knife that's got a handle that's round, it will turn in your hand. You need those flattened sides to really keep it oriented properly. But for this knife in particular, this was never intended for that purpose. This is a gardener's knife. This is a farmer's knife uh, from turn of the century France. Um, they were not thinking of this as a weapon. But you could, and you could also modify these open L's very easily to turn it into your own uh, style knife. So there you have it. I think it's a good self-defense knife. I think it could be in a pinch, um, but this is my outlook. What do you think is a really great everyday carry knife that you could definitely turn into a uh, a self-defense implement? I know you're saying right now, you're saying, Bob, any knife you have on you, can we... Yeah, but but that's not what I want to hear. I want to hear like, uh, you, you get to choose which one of these somewhat innocuous EDCs you have on you or one from your own collection and then you got to fight with it. All right, let me just recap. I have the AD 20.5 Civivi Hadros, uh, Ritter Hogue RSK Mini Mark I, 
got the paramilitary two, got the excellent uh, Finch Knives Holiday, the TRM Adam, got the Sabenza 21 from Chris Reeve Knives, the Rock Wall from Tactile Knife Company. Here we have the Main Street from Concept Knives and Dirk Pinkerton, designer. And then the classic, always been around, been around way longer than you've been around, Open L, in this case, the number eight. What do you think? Is this is this a uh, is this worth investigating? I think it is because we all carry knives on us. We never know when something might come up. Yes, we don't like to think of that eventuality. As a matter of fact, we like to shrink away from it. But if it happens, it happens. You'll be glad you had a knife. Let me know which knife you would want to have on you. And we're not talking the big, big, bad ones. All right. So that's it for me. Uh, be sure to join us tomorrow night for Thursday Night Knives where we're, when we give away this most awesome shield and tranchodon. And then, uh, and then subsequent weeks, we will be giving away other knives. So be sure to join us on Thursday Night Knives for great talk, giveaways, and other great uh, opportunities for knife fun. And then Sundays for our interview shows. We love those. That's the flagship. And then the following Wednesday for this show again. All right. For Jim, working his magic behind the switcher, my name is Bob DeMarco. I call myself the Knife Junkie. And uh, until next time we meet, I, I implore you, I beg of you, please, don't take dull for an answer. Thanks for listening to the Knife Junkie Podcast. If you enjoyed the show, please rate and review at reviewthepodcast.com. For show notes for today's episode, additional resources, and to listen to past episodes, visit our website, theknifejunkie.com. You can also watch our latest videos on YouTube at theknifejunkie.com slash YouTube. Check out some great knife photos on theknifejunkie.com slash Instagram, and join our Facebook group at theknifejunkie.com slash Facebook. And if you have a question or comment, email them to Bob at the knifejunkie.com or call our 24-7 listener line at 724-466-4487 and you may hear your comment or question answered on an upcoming episode of the Knife Junkie Podcast. Knife Junkie.